What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. We are back on the XO185. We have some prep work to do with the motor so that we can paint it. And I failed pretty badly at doing this, which you'll see in this video. But there's a lot of prep work that goes into it. If you're watching this video and you're here for the first time, you're behind. We have a lot of videos on this particular bike where we took the motor out that was completely locked, completely rebuilding it on a budget to make it fully operational again. In this video, I'll also be using some products from KBS. They're not sponsoring the video. I bought their product and I figured I'd try it out because they have lots of different stuff on their website for painting. One method I completely botched and the other one actually worked. I also managed to almost set my shop on fire. So be sure to stick around for that. But if you're new to the channel, welcome. We do videos on motorcycle repair and maintenance and project builds and motor overhauls. And if you're in that sort of thing, maybe this channel is for you. Subscribe, like, comment if you think this video was helpful at all. Being a Honda technician, I try to add in as much helpful, valuable stuff into each video. It's there somewhere. And if you like working on your own bike and maintaining it and taking care of it or repairing it on your own, in the description there's a course, 40 plus videos on how to do that properly, consistently. Better than most, we'll say. So be sure to grab that before you go, but let's dive in. All right, so we got a couple of cool updates for this motor. We got the seats recut on this and they did a pretty good job. That sounds that's the kind of sound you want to hear with valves and seats. Um, they did not replace the seats, although I would feel like we should have, but it's kind of hard to find that. And they thought that they could get it done and cut them with the way that they were. So it's not the prettiest thing. That angle that we need to seat on the face of the valve is there. You can see there some of it has been deteriorated from just the rust that we found inside of this thing. But they were confident that this was going to be just fine uh, and work like it should. So I'm also confident in that. The seating surface on the valve looks like it's right dead center of the face. You can kind of see this where they uh, lap them in. The face would be that entire shiny part of the valve that we're looking at. And you can see that, that portion of right in the center is like a line. That's where it was lapped in and that's dead center. So I'm not going to argue with that at all. Um, we also got a two-over bore from Standard Cylinder. You guys remember that old cylinder that we had? Look at that pretty thing. I found one online for relatively cheap that looks like it was already vapor honed and the cross hatching looks mint. It was bored over. This looks, looks really good. I'm totally happy with that. It even came with a piston. I'm not sure what brand piston it is, 0.75, which is the overbore. It's probably an aftermarket. came with pin clips, came with a new pin boss, which is awesome. I don't see any markings as to what brand it is. And it came with some rings. I'll totally run this. I'm not going to get a Honda piston or nothing like that. I'll, I'll run that the way that it is. That's fine. And our crankshaft has new bearings on it. Brand new bearings. Rod checked out good from my guy who's built many a race bikes and was pleased with that rod. No problems. Put the new bearings on there. I'm happy with that. I gotta get this, knock this pin out. We'll see how far I can get it out with that angle right there. It's a pretty interesting pin. Just for reference sake, there's nowhere to punch that thing out really on the other side, so. There we go, okay, easier than I thought. I don't think this is gonna come out, maybe it will. Oh, it will. Cool, there's no bearing there. We can pull this seal out. We can pull our Kickstarter seal out. Compression detent. So it looks like I can just slip that off there. And there's a circlet. So that pushes out there and no bearing sweet pop that seal out as well I'm gonna send this to the, my little soda blaster got a very very fine media right now which will likely make it look just smoother I think that this XL 185 would look better with a black motor 
But my oil passages, I don't, as much as I know that I can flush this stuff out pretty well, I don't want to leave too much room for error. So I'm just gonna take some electrical tape, just gonna ball it up, I'm gonna shove it down inside of that hole, at least. Making like a little plug for it. Just don't wanna lose it down in there, okay. Getting camera footage of the blasting cabinet and what it looks like inside never pans out how I want it to, so you're not gonna see it. So this is what it was like before. And that's after. I haven't washed it yet, but good surface to paint on. Washed these cases out real well, and I wanted to inspect these bearings. I don't plan on replacing every bearing just because I'm here, even though it's like, while well, you're there, you might as well. Some of these bearings are just, they feel brand new. This one, you can hear it, because it has no oil in it whatsoever, but it feels brand new. It feels like a cleaned out bearing. I don't feel any roughness. I don't feel any grinding. I don't feel anything at all. This is our oil pump side crankshaft here and our main shaft. This is our main shaft bearing for the transmission. This needle bearing, cleaned out. Feels really nice, I don't feel anything that's stuck. I looked at this very, very closely with a driller's eye and a light, and so just to see that I see any like wear taking place on the roller pins themselves, and I don't see any. So I'm going to just loop this up in the meantime, just so this does not rust. And I'm definitely a advocate for might as well when you're doing things. You know, the case is apart. Hey, is this bearing okay? If you have to ask that, then you might as well just replace it, in other words. But I know what a good and bad bearing feel like, and I'm not trying to spend $5,000 on this bike for might as well. So we're going to try to save where we can. Even though the bearing's probably eight bucks, but when you say there's 10 of them, then that adds up. But what I wanted to do, as you know, is paint this thing, and I wanted to send this through Soda Blaster, but since I'm keeping the bearings inside of it, we're gonna try a different method, which is just etching the metal, which is a part of a kit that I got from KBS. So let's have a look at the other case half. This one has two bearings, one right here and one right there. This, where, this is where our sprocket's gonna live. So this would be the counter shaft. And again, I don't feel any weirdness in here, as if there's rust, rust deposits or anything of the sort. We will be putting new seals in here. I'm gonna clean this one out on this side a little bit better. Awesome. But it's gonna be a real pain to keep stuff out of these bearings, whether they were oiled or not. I'll grab a little socket so I don't damage the little nipple on that little neutral switch right there. Bingo. I just wanna clean the surface around this bearing. Y'all remember when I used all that contact cleaner to clean the case up? Well, I didn't remember, so. I'm not trying to get the bearing out. I'll heat the crap out of this now. I do not have a blind hole bearing puller here. I'm kind of curious if I can just get this thing hot enough for it to come out. Bastard. Oh, 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 with the luck. With the snap ring plier luck. Imagine that. There you go. Bearings are out. That was crude. And the after. Two down, a bunch more to go. Next, what we gotta work on our rotor case right there, stator case, whatever you wanna call it. Valve cover head, or valve cover. Rocker arms look great on these. We're gonna reuse these for sure. We gotta get this off. See, this kinda holds that in place. 
I'm going to pull the shafts out and inspect those shafts, make sure that those aren't crazy. But this feels awesome on both. Definitely reusable. Pull our little detent arm out. And we have our rotor cover here. And then get these little coils off. Let's grab our impact driver for that. Number three Phillips. So pliable, I'm happy about that. We'll make quick work of this. All right, that's next in the sander. You can go ahead and mark these. It's gonna be our exhaust. This will be our intake. Let's put an I, E. That sounds like gunshots to me. Let's see if we can get lucky. They look awesome. No shims or nothing for the rockers, that's fine. I don't see any pitting on the inside. I'm happy with that. And they slid right out of there. Oil is a good thing. Perfect. I remember we had this long bolt up top of here. Let's go ahead and grab this. Like a little pin bolt. And I imagine that will allow this to come out, yep. Looks like this pin probably just went right on through like that to hold it in place from coming out. Cool. That one's ready now too. Before and after. Now, to have some more fun with our guys over at KBS. As you guys know, I did a tank sealing kit from them. It turned out phenomenal. They sell all kinds of stuff. So why not look for what they offer with their coating, their motor, motor coater. And they're thinner. I imagine this is for if you're spraying it with a gun, which I am not doing. So we'll go with the most caveman method that they allow, which I believe is with a brush. And they provide a brush with some gloves. We got the motor coater, engine enamel. High temp, fast drying, will not blister, flake, or peel. And I got gloss black. They got lots of different colors to choose from. Rust blast, pre-paint primer. Powerful rust remover, uh, etching, leaves zinc, phosphate coating, extends standing time between prep and painting. I love how much product they give you too. And our KBS Clean. I'll tell you guys what, their cleaner, this clean, I have used on more stuff. I cleaned the entire motor of a uh, Honda Magna that was just completely covered in dried up uh, nasty mucky gas. Just, I never thought the color would come back. I sprayed this on it and literally saw it fall off. Um, I really love their all-purpose cleaner and degreaser. It's better than Simple Green. It's better than all of those guys. It's a lot stronger and it works great. So I'm glad I got some more of this. So, after reading this, they do say that uh, sandblasting is the ideal choice. Um, that they, they don't require any of the other stages other than just cleaning them off and blow drying them. But... Then it says that, uh, please note that plastic media, bead, or soda blast surfaces do not provide an adequate amount of abrasion needed to direct mo for direct motor coat. So, it says to go to step two, which would be the uh, rust blast, even though this, these cases have no rust on them. Motor coater. So, ideally, they say to, you want to keep the metal wet while spraying this. Uh, 10 to 20 minutes, rinse thoroughly with water and allow service to dry to completely. A slight powder, powder residue may appear. This is zinc phosphate coating which adds, aids the motor coating adhesion. A little bit hesitant because I would think, okay, I'm gonna leave brush strokes all over this motor, but they are guaranteeing um, expert quality results with no brush strokes. It levels out very cleanly and we don't have to worry about that. So that's what we're gonna do. And get all the hairs out of this thing. One thing in the instructions that kind of confused me that I probably should have just called them and asked, but they, when they were talking about using a uh, sand blaster for the first step and you can just paint directly onto that. The media that I use is very, very fine, but I would still consider it sand. I guess in the moment I thought, okay, what they're talking about soda, soda blasting. There's so many different terms for it, like vapor honing. Maybe they meant soda blasting as vapor honing I'm not sure so when I used the product of their etcher I used it on the parts that I did not media blast or sand blast which wasn't very many but anyways I'm supposed to be using gloves right now but I'm not this is an etcher 
So just be mindful about that. Like I won't be spraying it on my camera lens or anything like that. Or letting it drip onto the floor like it is now. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. Instructions, I've kept it moist. Nice and moist. It says to wash it off, rinse it off, and then let it dry completely. Moist. All right, so it is painting day. I let it dry overnight. So it's completely dry. I'm not gonna touch it with my fingertips. Currently, I'm not bold enough to put a, cr a strange color on a motor. I thought about it long and hard. This is a stir, not shake approach. It smells like model paint. You ever paint models? I used to paint models. All right, here goes nothing. I guess we're gonna start. This one seems like it'd be more difficult. Let's start on this one. Okay. It says don't apply in thick coats. So it's very flowy. So we're just gonna go for it. It does appear to be flowing pretty well. I just don't want any like bubbles in it or nothing. I really did not know what to think about the brush technique. Just don't want any runs or anything weird. It does not take a lot to cover it. And there's a hair from the brush. I probably could use like a better brush. Yeah, there's like brush flakes. <sighs> the maid in Japan is not working out. It's completely filled the letters. So I probably could have went a lot lighter around the lettering, that's for sure. There are a few runs in it, so I'm just gonna see if I can't feather them out. There's a freaking hair in it. Dang it. No! I don't know how often I should be touching this while it's drying. I think I really contaminated the paint. <laughs> I think wiping it on this wood just put particles on this. That was not smart. But we're gonna let that dry. Yep, y'all know the drill. All right, I'm gonna clean this brush off and we're gonna go after this one. Round two, I think this one's gonna be a little more difficult, but I've gotten my crappiness out of the way, I think. Let's see if we can screw this up. I'm gonna go on with, with a, thinning, a thinner technique. Yeah, less is more. That's what I've learned from this. All right, we'll go with that. There's just some runs in it that I don't like. This kind of stuff will drive me nuts. But we're gonna we're gonna be happy with this. Okay, let's clean up. This one just like you can see the bubbles and the lines in it. It's because I kept going over it when I was drying, which I fully understand. So I might end up sanding this one down. Yeah, I'm just screwing it up. Let me stop. So, so far, happy with the results on most of the pieces. Um, this one looks fine. There's like this weird chemical reaction that kind of took place at the bottom of this, which I'm not sure what that is. This one did not turn out good. I'm not happy with this, the way that it looks. And I totally blame myself for this. Um, working in dirty, dirty conditions, Trying to rebrush already drying areas um, is what led to this looking like complete garbage because there's just specks of all kinds of crap inside of this thing. And I blame myself. That sucks, but we'll redo it. But now we have to move on to the bigger, more intricate pieces, which for these I wish I could spray them, but I'm not, again, not going to spray them. We will yet again try to brush this on, which I think... It's gonna prove itself pretty difficult, especially for these small areas. And this time I'm gonna use a different brush. We'll see if the results are any better. I don't know. This might be the wrong brush. I don't know. Gotta find out. I already feel like this is the wrong brush to use. <laughs> At least the wrong angle. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna work. That's why I wanted to try this on the bottom first. Way too hard to get into where it needs to go, which sucks. And it's running. 
And this paintbrush feels like it's just holding on to way too much paint that won't come out of the brush. All right, so we're gonna stop there. All right, y'all, so I'm officially over this idea of brushing on paint. As you've seen, it works well in some cases, sometimes it does not. I don't think I had the patience for it. I mean, like, some of this stuff turned out fine, and I'm not going to touch it. That's a, looks like a super high gloss, but there's imperfections in weird places that I'm just not going to spend the time to sand inside of there. I really kind of glopped it on in these areas just because it's really hard to get to but when we come around the sections that I that do matter to me you see these huge runs on top of the motor here and I just don't like that I don't blame the product I, it's just my ability to brush on the paint and make it look nice is just not working out for me I actually do a lot better with just some rattle can stuff you know look at those runs and that's my fault i i blame i blame myself for that the bottom of this looks like a two-year-old did it even though you won't even see the bottom but do not fear because kbs offers the exact same paint in a rattle can which i should have done to begin with because i've gotten way better results with stuff but we're going to re-sand this the ugly parts of that with just some 400 grit wet sandpaper to get that back to a smooth surface, clean it off completely, wipe it down nice, and then we're gonna go after it with some rattle can. I'll probably hit this over again one more time with the rattle can as well, but just gotta make sure all the crap's off of it. This one actually didn't, like this is the one that I redid. I'm not too upset with that. There's still like some waviness in the brush, but it did level out pretty well. But, of course, I still had runs. There's a spot there that I missed. You can see this waviness in here, which I just kind of bums me out that I did that. But all this crap just delays putting the motor together. All right. Everything's covered that I care about. This will be the last time <laughs> I'm painting this stupid motor. Um, it's just way too much work. And I'm too much of a perfectionist to let things go. All right, so seven days after painting, um, I'm happy with the results. I'm not going to go back and do anything over again, that's for sure. The aerosol is definitely the way to go. I'm much smoother, way more happy with the results, that's for sure. So we'll end the misery of that whole painting saga there. I, I feel like I wasted some money, probably wasted some time, definitely wasted some time. So in conclusion of this whole video, I would probably use the spray paint from the jump. I mean, it turned out way better. It's way easier to get things covered and smooth and consistent, especially on a motor with all this intricacy on it. If I was doing the brush, maybe on like a frame or something like that would be better, but intricate parts, don't do the brush. It's nearly impossible to get it to work right. So that's my two cents from that. But again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're into this sort of thing. Next week, we're going to try to dive into putting that motor back together, which I'm really excited about. So as always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you next time.